Hey everyone, welcome back. I was doing some reading the other day and I stumbled across this theory and I just, I don't know, it really got me thinking. Oh, what was that? So get this, have you ever thought about the word hospital? Like really thought about it? I mean, I guess I know what it means, but... Uh, right, we all know what it is, but what if I told you it could be an acronym? An acronym for hospital. Yeah, like H-O... S-P-I-T-A-L. Each letter stands for something. Okay, now I'm intrigued. So, buckle up, because we're diving deep on this one. We're going to see if hospital is secretly an acronym. All right, let's hear it. What does hospital supposedly stand for? The theory says it's house of sick people, including treatment and labor. House of sick people, including treatment and labor. Wow. Uh, I know, right? It sounds kind of crazy at first. It does, but it's definitely interesting. Do we know where this theory came from? Is it a credible source? Well, that's the thing. There's no like official proof or anything. It's one of those things that floats around online. I see. So it's more of a fun thought experiment than a historical fact. Exactly. But, and this is where it gets really interesting, the sources I found that talk about this theory they point out some pretty compelling clues that could back it up. Okay, I'm all ears. What kind of clues? Well, for starters, they talk about the historical context of hospitals. Like, we tend to think of a hospital as just a place you go when you're sick, right? Right, for medical treatment. Exactly. <laughs> but back in the day, hospitals were so much more than that. Oh, absolutely. Historically, hospitals served many different purposes. So tell me more about that. What else did hospitals do? Well, think about it. Before modern social safety nets, hospitals were often places of refuge for the poor and destitute. They offered shelter and basic care, regardless of whether someone was sick or not. It's almost like a house of, well, people, not just sick people. Right. And they often played a major role in childbirth. Long before specialized maternity wards, hospitals were the primary place where women went to deliver their babies. So that lines up with the labor part of the acronym. See, it's starting to fit together a little, isn't it? It is interesting how some of those historical functions do align with the acronym. Okay, I'm more intrigued now. What other clues are there? All right, so get this. Another clue they mentioned is the architectural design of hospitals. Architectural design? Yeah. Like, think about how hospitals are laid out. You've got different wards and sections, all very organized and separated. That's true. You have dedicated areas for inpatients, outpatients, surgery, maternity, and so on. Right. So maybe, just maybe, that layout is kind of a reflection of that whole house of sick people, including treatment and labor idea. Hmm. That's a thought. Like each ward or section representing a different piece of the acronym. I can see where they're coming from with that. I know. It's a bit of a stretch, but it's fun to consider. But wait, there's one more thing I found super interesting. I could lay it on me. They talk about language patterns. Like think about how we talk about hospitals. We say hospital stay or hospital birth. Right? Yeah, that's true. We don't really say medical stay or medical birth. Exactly. So the way we use language seems to reinforce this idea of the hospital as a place that handles all these different functions, just like the acronym suggests. It's like the acronym is embedded in how we talk about hospitals without us even realizing it. That's a very sharp observation. You're right. The way we use language can say a lot about how we conceptualize things. And in this case, it kind of adds another layer to the whole hospital as an acronym theory. Right. Okay. So we've got this acronym theory. We've got historical practices that align with it. We've got possible architectural clues. And we've even got language patterns that seem to back it up. I'm not saying it's definitely true, but what do you think? Is there a chance hospital really started as an acronym? Well, I have to say you've presented a compelling case. It's definitely thought provoking. But as someone who studies language, I also have to approach it with a bit of caution. Of course, of course. Etymology, you know, tracing the origins of words, it's a complex process. There's always a chance that hospital evolved from an earlier word or phrase that just happened to sound like this acronym we're discussing. So it could just be a coincidence. It's possible. But even if that's the case, the fact that this acronym fits so well with the historical and functional aspects of hospitals is still really fascinating. It shows how language can sometimes mirror broader social patterns and concepts. That's a great point. It's like the word itself tells a story even if it wasn't intentional. Exactly. Well, this whole deep dive has certainly made me look at hospital, and I guess words in general, in a totally new light. That's the beauty of exploring language, isn't it? It challenges our assumptions and makes us appreciate the richness and complexity of words. Absolutely. And on that note, I want to leave everyone with one final thought. What if, just for a moment, we imagine that hospital was intentionally designed as this acronym? 
What would that tell us about the people who created it? What message were they trying to send about the role of hospitals in society? It's an interesting question to ponder. It is. So the next time you see or hear the word hospital, maybe take a second to think about everything we've talked about today. You might just see it in a whole new way. And that's it for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's been a great conversation.